Today on Running to Him. Nadab and Abihu lost their lives because they wanted to do their own thing. Today we will read Leviticus chapters 10 through 12 and concentrate on chapter 10 verses 1 through 6. Leviticus 10, 1 through 6 says, Now Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took their respective fire pans and after putting fire in them, placed incense on it, and offered strange fire before the Lord. He had not commanded them. And the fire came down from the presence of the Lord and consumed them, and they died before the Lord. And then Moses said to Aaron, It is what the Lord spoke, saying, By those who come near me, I will be treated as holy, and before all the people, I will be honored. So Aaron therefore kept silent. Moses called them Mishal and Lepham, the sons of Aaron's uncle Uziel, and said to them, Come forward, carry your relatives away from the front of the sanctuary to the outside of the camp. So they came forward and carried them still in their tunics to the outside of the camp, as Moses had said. Then Moses said to Aaron and to his sons Eleazar and Ithamar, Do not uncover your heads nor tear your clothes, so you will not die, and he will not become wrathful against all the congregation. But your kinsmen, the whole house of Israel, shall be well the burning that the Lord has brought about. Now, today's reading addresses the theme of holiness. What does it take to be holy? Are there specific activities that we do? Are there certain activities that we cannot do? And finally, could there be a certain activity that will possibly cause us great harm? The story of Nadab and Abihu brings great questions to mind, particularly in the Protestant world. Nadab and Abihu were two of Aaron's four sons. They had been consecrated as priests, but they took it upon themselves to worship in a way that they wanted rather than the way that God had prescribed. This action caused their immediate death and the command from God that Aaron and his family not mourn the loss of these two children. What was the damning part of Nadab and Abihu's crime? Were they not worshiping God? Didn't they come to God as priests to make an offering? Weren't their actions reverent? The answer to all these questions is that God had not prescribed that they come to him in the manner in which they did. They took it upon themselves to worship in the way they wanted, not in the way that God wanted them to worship. And this makes an excellent point today. Are we glorifying God in the manner that he prescribed? I wish there was an easy answer to this question, but unfortunately, it's not that simple. Others also pulled away after Martin Luther pulled away from the Catholic Church. One of them was a person by the name of Ulrich Zwingli. He was a Swiss priest, and he believed in simplicity of worship. He believed that the Catholic liturgy was causing many people to worship things rather than God, so he removed all the pomp and ceremony from his offered worship services. Other groups, such as the Anabaptists, followed suit and stopped baptizing children, only baptizing those who had verbally expressed their desire to follow Christ. And as the years passed after the Reformation, the Church of England broke away from the Catholic Church and provided its services in church hierarchy. The Puritans broke away from the Church of England. The Presbyterians in Scotland created their worship rituals. And now we have a situation where only a minority of Protestant churches come anywhere close to the rituals which were practiced in the early Reformation. So does that make us wrong in our worship? Well, there isn't really a satisfactory answer either way. There is no worship style outlined in the New Testament, but the early church followed many of the Jewish rituals practiced in the synagogues. Over the years, these religious observances became seen in Eastern Orthodox traditions. But we must be cautious. We cannot take our worship services to the extreme, and we are coming close to doing so. Modern worship and Bible churches and the Bible church movement make other Protestant churches look less and less like a church service and more like a music concert followed by a long message. God wants order in his worship. We cannot take it upon ourselves to make up the rules so that we might go the way that we desire. Thank you for listening. We pray that today's devotion was meaningful to you. We would love to hear from you. You can use either Facebook or YouTube to like, subscribe, share, and tell others about us. 
If you would like to contact us, you can reach me at PhineasJacobus at runningtohim.net.